Thanks. We also tend to say just green site and green map because it's just easier to say and green is my favorite color. So um, we all know about naming software, right? So um, this is only a lightning talk and I do have a poster. And so what I thought I would spend my time here is actually kind of making some editorial comments that might be of interest to the community. And if you're interested in our software, you know, it's online. I put the slides up and I'm at my poster and all that good stuff. And so one point I wanted to make is that we've had a lot of talk at this meeting about this open science ecosystem. And I want to thank one of my colleagues, John Junk, who is in the education community um, for inspiring this slide. And really, this would be a fully connected graph, except the lines would overlap in a lot of places. And so we've heard a lot of talk about open source code, open access publishing, and open data. but. I also want to just say that really what that does is facilitates open science as an open process and we've talked about reproducible research um, and you know just the example of CodeFest was an example of citizen science of someone who not in our community came and contributed and I also want to just make the point that this also contributes to research integrity. Um, and something that we may not have talked about yet um, is open pedagogy. So I'm um, primarily an educator, and there's a huge movement for making educational tools also available and open source. And really, one of the forefronts of that has been the bioinformatics um, education. And so these are some of the groups that I've been involved with. The BioQuest Curriculum Consortium has been around for 30 years. And um, they have, you know, foundationally been using some bioinformatics tools with the idea of engaging students in authentic research. Um, I was just last week at a workshop on next generation sequencing that I learned how to use bow tie and top hat and all that good stuff for the first time. Um, and then I'm not directly involved with the last one, but. Um, uh, I share a lab with someone who is with HHMI is also got a large sequencing project that with the idea that freshmen are sequencing and assembling genomes of phages from the environment. So these are my students and um, some that are not pictured that contribute to um, the software. And I use the software development both as student research projects for my own research and also teaching um, in my classrooms. And so this is kind of my overall uh, workflow in my lab. I have a wet lab group that's generating microarray data, but we're going to switch over to RNA-seq pretty soon. Um, we teach them how to do normalization, statistical analysis, clustering, um, gene networks, and then we develop the software for modeling and visualizing those networks, and then hopefully feeding that back into the wet lab uh, to give us um, uh, new insights. And so this is just a summary of the features of GreenMap. Like I said, you can um, get that from um, the poster or talk to me or go to our website. And GreenSight is the visualization tool um, that we wrote um, to facilitate the visualization of the output from GreenMap. But I think that probably my commentary that would be of interest in discussion for the community is kind of, here's the tale of two open source projects. Uh, one on the left that I did in collaboration with a mathematician, and one on the right with a collaboration with a computer scientist who is already immersed in the open source world. So our green map software has been developed in MATLAB almost over 10 years now by successive waves of math students in collaboration with my math collaborator. And I managed to shift them over to an open development process about two years ago and get the data up on um, GitHub. But still, my math collaborator emails me code, and I push it to the repository for him. Um, we chose MATLAB, not Octave, because that's what my math collaborator is comfortable with. And frankly, I don't see us taking that dive anytime soon because it's, we are just paying off too much technical debt already in terms of getting the code like up to snuff. Um, in terms of refactoring it and getting tests in there. And the main thing is that we have an interplay between coding teams of students and data analysis teams of students. So we kind of have this built-in cluster of interplay. And our goal is still to make this be reproducible research. In terms of GreenSight, we were able to start from the ground up using open source um, tools and building our own project. And I'm well aware this is yet another graph layout tool. But in some sense, we had a very specific use case of um, making it easy for people who are using the modeling software to just quickly visualize a specific type of network. And so that reduces the learning curve. We're doing it as a web app. Um, it's also with the idea of, you know, do one thing well and really just do a nice presentation of, of the data that we're working with. 
But I also want to make the point that it is possible then to teach these software engineering best practices at the same time that you're producing research quality code. Now, while we had the specific use case, you know, we're trying to do our best to make it generally useful with documentation and so on, so that if other people do want to use it, they can. Um, and again, we've got interplay between the students that are um, coding the modeling versus the students that are doing the visualization. So I'm only able to kind of touch on um, a lot of different things, but I'm happy to talk afterwards and at my poster. Um, and I just want to thank uh, you for the opportunity of telling you about my work. Thanks.